My name is Sinead Green. I'm going to be talking about chemistry and how it links to your health. The first section I have is 7.1 and that's solutions. Water is lost from the body and replaced by the same amount of fluids and foods consumed throughout the day. Dehydration is a problem that a lot of people suffer. The average adult has a water balance of 60% and the average infant has a water balance of 75%. Um, dehydration rates. Severe dehydration in adults can maximize to 10% for the loss of fluid and fatal dehydration where you would have to go to the hospital or you would die is 20%. Infant severe dehydration is 5 to 10 percent. Explore your world. Here are examples of solutions that may mix or may not mix. Oil and water, water and vinegar, salt and water, sugar and water, and salt and oil. The only three that mix and make solutions are water and vinegar, salt and water, and sugar and water. 7.2 is on electrolytes and non-electrolytes. Electrolytes are essential to the body because they replace important fluids that keep the body replenished. Replacement solutions that you may get at the hospital when you are dehydrated could be sodium chloride, potassium chloride, ringer solutions, maintenance solutions with dextrose, and replacement solution. 7.3 is on solubility. It involves compounds in the body that exceed their solubility levels and form solid products. These are gout and kidney stones. Gout have high levels of uric acid in your body and kidney stones form in urinary tracts where calcium and phosphate and calcium oxalate they build up. Drinking eight glasses of water can keep you from having gout. Hello, my name is Makisha Dunlop and I'll be giving you a couple of interactive sites for the solutions chapter. Our first website is PHET Interactive Simulations and this website um, gives a couple of virtual labs and this one is specifically on concentration and what you do is you open the lab and you're allowed to put salt in the tub and it'll tell you um, the concentration of whatever you put into the um, tub. If you scroll down it have it has has a lab sheet and the lab sheet will give you instructions on the second website is Mr. Kent's chemistry page on this page on this website I want to show you two different pages the first page is on electrolytes on the electrolyte page they give um, a def definitions for a non electrolyte and an electrolyte also a also this web this web page includes a chart for solubility guidelines for aqueous solutions and if you go through it will tell you um, what I am, what um, compounds are soluble and what which ions have exceptions to the rules. So these ones are for soluble compounds and these are insoluble compounds and these are the exceptions. Two. Some of the strengths and weaknesses of this website is that after it gives you all the ma all of the information, it allows you to um, test whether or not you know the information with the virtual lab as well as some questions, some multiple choice questions. Um, the second web page talks about solutions. This web page mostly gives videos, and that's one of the weaknesses for, a solu for the solutions web page is it's only video, so it really doesn't provide an interactive, too many interactive. The final web page is solutions concentration calculations, and on this web page it gives a brief definitions for solvents, solutes, and solutions. And after that, it shows you how to um, calculate concentration as well as molarity and dilution. Some strengths for this website is that it gives in-depth explanations on how to calculate each one of the topics. Some weaknesses for this um, website is that it Hey, my name is Hannah Murphy, and I'm going to help you understand the concepts. So for 7.75, it says, select a diagram that represents the solution formed by a solid. You know we have our non-electrolytes, our weak electrolytes, and our strong electrolytes. So in our diagram, we have three different solutions. Um, so for our non-electrolytes, we know that when they 
break down, they don't, they break into molecules, but they don't break into ions. So this diagram right here shows molecules, but they're not broken down. For weak electrolytes, we know they kind of break down partially, so we'll see a mixture of okay. molecules and ions. And for strong electrolytes, we'll just see ions it's broken down completely. So our first diagram is clearly a weak electrolyte. Our second is a strong So for 7.76, they ask the question, why do lettuce leaves in the salad wilt after vinegar dressing containing salt is added? This happens because of osmosis. Lettuce leaves are full of water, and so when you put vinaigrette dressing on it, the water from the leaves kind of transfer to the vinaigrette to make that. Hello, my name is Kia Harris. I'm a freshman nursing student at North Carolina Agricultural and Technical State University. Today I will be discussing chapters 7.1 through 7.4. Before I begin with the equation, I will first define to you the mass percent. The mass percent is mass of a solute divided by the mass of a solute plus the mass of a solvent and multiplied by 100. stated is, a solution is prepared by mixing 15 grams of sodium carbonate, Na2CO3, and 235 grams of H2O, which is water. Calculate the mass percentage of the solution. So the mass solute is 15 grams of, car of sodium carbonate. The mass solution is found by adding sodium carbonate to water, which is 15 grams plus 235 grams. So in conclusion, the mass solution would be 250 grams. The mass percent is found by dividing the mass of the solute by the mass of the Hi, again my name is Kia Harris and I will also be discussing equivalents. Equivalents are the amount of an electrolyte or an ion that provides one mole of an electrical charge, which, which can either be positive or negative. An example of this is, let's say we have an ion. The ion is sodium and iron. Sodium has an electrical charge of one, and the number of equivalents in one mole is one. I, iron has an electrical charge of three, and the number of equivalents and one mole is three. The problem stated here is in 2.5 moles of SO4 there are, and to solve this equation you would multiply 2.5 by two equivalents and divide it by one mole. 